Hey and welcome back. Um, in this video, we'll be uh, continuing with our symbolic computation uh, and moving on to solving equations. So let's get started. So as we have seen before uh, with the SymPy, we can set up uh, and um, you know do things with complex uh, mathematical equations. And one of the things we would like to do is solve equations that are complex. And SymPy allows us to solve those equations uh, quite easily using the uh, solve um, function uh, that's provided. So, uh, in a nutshell, SymPy can solve equations even when they have not been put in simplest form. So that means it doesn't have to be uh, simplified. It will, well, it's uh, able to uh, interpret uh, those um, functions for us. So, for instance, suppose we wish to solve uh, this equation here. Uh, x cubed minus 6x squared equals 6 minus 11x. Uh, we can just subtract the right hand side from the left hand side and then SymPy will uh, handle the simplification that is needed. So uh, as long as we just chuck everything onto the one side and say the other side equal to 0, we can solve that. All right? let's have a look. So continuing from this, um, uh, let's just run it again to refresh. So x equals symbol x, and what it's saying is that we have defined x as our symbols. Uh, if you are not sure, uh, please see our previous video on uh, SymPy stuff. And then what we want to tell is uh, solve uh, x, um, well, solve this equation, and we know that x is uh, a symbol here. So what it's saying is that uh, it will solve and return us values 1 to 3. Um, and that indicates uh, the uh, solutions for this exist at when x equals 1, 2, or 3. Ah, how, how simple is that? Okay, um, we could, if desired, uh, we could ins uh, instead express the e Equal equality using uh, the eq function. So what that does is uh, instead of trying to rearrange our function, uh, our equation to put on one side and equal to zero, we just say that um, eq means they're equal. So our first input into eq function is uh, the one that was on the left hand side, x cubed minus six x squared. And the other side is uh, 6 minus 11 times x. Actually, we don't really need a bracket there if necessary. Uh, then uh, this will also solve uh, the equation for us the same way. Okay, so if you are, if, if, if it is difficult to move one, star, uh, one side of the equation to the other, uh, however, that should be quite straightforward, um, we can always use the uh, eq function to uh, say that these are the two equations on each side of the uh, equal symbol. Okay. Um, but we do have to be wary about using the double equal sign. So note that using the double equal sign will not do what we want. It compares two formulas to determine whether they are exactly the same formula or not. Okay. So let's have a quick look. So we have already defined x as a symbol. Uh, so we, we want the content of this. Yeah. Okay, and check whether this side of the equation equal equal um, this side of the equation. That's what we want to check. And what it's saying is this is false, right? Um, and also doing the solve uh, is not going to work for us. We want a simple equal sign, but we can't do that inside the equation. So we have to use the eq function to do that. Okay. So this is doing a um, conditional check whether these uh, equations are same or not. Um, obviously, these are two different. So we can't really do anything about that. So now, solving equations with multiple variables. So previously, we only dealt with single variable, but as we know, uh, SymPy can handle multiple variables uh, when they exist. So if we have an un under constrained equation, uh, solutions may be given in terms of the other variable. Okay? For instance, let's say we have this particular equation, 
then we can solve for y in SymPy as follows. Now we want to uh, declare uh, x and y. And we have this very long uh, equation. So I have separated each term line by line here. Again, if using the backslash, you can go into multiple lines. Okay, so by solving this, we get uh, a solution saying 1, negative uh, 3x, and 2x. And what this tells us is that uh, the equation will be satisfied uh, when any of the following are true. So we can plug in y equals 1. Um, uh, then uh, we can solve for uh, this equation to be 0, or y equals negative 3x, or y equals 2x. So, as this example shows, uh, we can still work uh, with multiple variables. So, you can even have third variable and still solve one, but obviously your answer is going to be a bit more complex. Okay. So, now uh, we can also deal with uh, systems of equations. So, you're given multiple equations, and then what we can do is um, put it into the solve function, then it's going to solve uh, the answer for us. All right. So let's have a look at uh, how this can be encoded into SymPy first. Okay, so what we have is put it into the solve function as a list of multiple equations that we had before. So here, z equals uh, 4x, so we convert it into uh, a one side equal to zero, so now it's z minus 4x, or you could try to put it down into an equation, but equation function but this is probably easier uh, to deal with so all right so moving on to this one so now we're dealing with three symbols okay so we chuck it onto the solve function and what it tells us is it's going to return us a list of dictionary objects uh, each one representing a solution okay so x uh, because we have uh, three symbols so we have x y z if everything is zero, then it's going to solve this equation. Um, but it can also be solved when x equals 2, y equals 2, and when z is 8. Okay, So you can easily check uh, if we chuck in zero, obviously everything just cancels out, so it's true. Uh, but if z equals 8 and x is 2, so this is 8 equals 8, so that's fine. x and y equal, uh, they are the same thing, so they 2 and 2, that's true. Uh, z is 8, and 2 squared plus 2 squared is also 8. So this satisfies uh, this particular equation. Ooh. Okay. So in this case, uh, well, these are the solutions that we just covered. All right. Okay. And uh, SymPy also provides us a function to simplify symbolic expressions. For instance, let's say we have this uh, very complicated looking function. Okay, then we can encode this as a, a function like this, uh, which is very long. So let's use x as a symbol and we create f function like this. Then what we can do is call a simplify function. Uh, this is part of the SymPy library. Simplify f, then it's going to show us uh, the shortened form um, after it's trying to simplify it as much as possible. So this complex equation actually comes down to 10 to the power of x uh, minus 1. Okay, so those are some different functions to um, handle some complicated looking ones to see whether you can simplify it further. Okay, so now we can uh, actually try to solve uh, equations by plugging numbers. So before we were trying to solve equations with respect to symbols, but we can now substitute values to those symbols and solve those equations. So these uh, can be achieved by using the subs function. Okay. So uh, for example, a subs method. So this is a method, something an expression can do rather than a function. So we call it by putting dot subs attached to uh, an equation. Okay. So we pass in the variable and the value it should take. So we're still working with um, x symbol, but determine um, this function, and then we have uh, subs, substitute x with value 0. Then it's going to give us 1 because this is going to be 0, 0, 
and remaining with one. If we substitute x with a third, uh, then it's going to calculate 0 0.2222. Uh, we can see substitute x equals 1, then it's going to be 0 because it's going to be 2 times 1 minus 3 plus 1. So that cancels out and returns us 0. So this is how a substitute works and you can easily uh, check what values uh, they return. And by doing this, you can even graph how um, these equations will look when you put them into plots as well. Right? So you can, uh, for example, you can create a numpy arrange function and using this symbolic execution, you can substitute into the values to retrieve the value uh, answer and then save that into the, um, another numpy array and then you can map that out. Okay. Um, we can also get an exact result for the previous expression by passing in a rational number. So these are created by calling a rational function. So I have already imported rational. So what we can do is um, put uh, rational and this returns us um, two over nine. Okay. So before we saw uh, 0.222 of this, but basically that in a fraction is two out of nine. So if we do have uh, some rational numbers that can be better represented using fractions, then we can call a rational uh, function to represent that this is one third and the output will also be tried to be fit into rational if it can. Okay. So substitution in multivariate symbolic ex uh, expression. So now we have um, uh, multiple variables, then if we substitute uh, one symbol with the value, then it's going to give us a, a solution with respect to the other symbol. So we can do that uh, like so. Okay, so now we're using two symbols again. So we create those symbols and define the function as such. Okay, um, then we can still use the subs method, uh, uh, but uh, this time it's just going to return us um, the, the equation with respect to um, the other symbol still being there because we haven't uh, provided uh, what the answer is. Okay, and obviously, you know, you can stack some um, uh, a function calls like diff uh, f dot subs x three. Okay, then it's going to differentiate this uh, with respect to y and so forth. Okay, so we're not really confined to call these functions or methods uh, one at a time, we, we can always um, stack them together if we know that the output of the internal uh, inner um, calls uh, will be accepted by the outer calls. Okay. Um, and of course, here we only substitute one, values, uh, one value, but we can substitute both values uh, as such. Okay. So we can pass in a list of pairs uh, as tuples uh, to substitute in multiple values at once. Okay. So now we have symbols again. I think we're using the same equation, aren't we? Anyway, I'll define it again. And then we have f is subs. So here, uh, the key point is uh, now we are passing in a list and this contains the tuple uh, where it defines each um, the symbol with the specific value. So if we run this, then it's now it's going to calculate a specific value for it. Uh, because only uh, value x and y are used as a symbols here, that now we can calculate the exact value. If we do have another um, symbol inside, for example, z, then it's going to be uh, with respect to z. Okay. Uh, we can even substitute in another variable. So it doesn't have to be a number, so you can substitute uh, another variable uh, to replace uh, what you currently have in your uh, equation. So for example, uh, now we're going to create three symbols. So we now know that uh, Z is a symbol here, and we're going to be using the same formula F here like this. Um, but what we can do is substitute Y with Z. So if we did have Z in the equation, it 
uh, it will probably change how it's structured but basically where y was uh, it they're all replaced by z and you can even uh, substitute uh, with another equation for instance so if y was equal to z plus 1 then z plus 1 can be replaced onto our formula uh, our function uh, and replaced by z plus 1 here okay so that's pretty much it for solving equations really uh, hopefully all of those um, functions and methods uh, will allow you to um, do a bunch of stuff with uh, complex equations even solving them uh, with respect to different uh, vari variables whether it's singular or multiple all right so that should cover all of it uh, otherwise i will see you in the next video bye bye